Okay. Dear students, I hope you have watched the second session. Now today, welcome to my third session of uh, YouTube classes. In previous class, we have discussed the different types of diseases. Today, we will be discussing uh, common diseases in human beings. Today, we will try to discuss uh, two diseases. Number one is typhoid. Then we will try to discuss today right, one more disease that is known as pneumonia. So these are the common diseases what you have in your syllabus in second year, 8th chapter human health and diseases. We are discussing, you all know that. We have discussed common diseases in human beings. There are many more. To start with, typhoid is first uh, disease. Let us take up. Let us discuss about that. Typhoid is the fifth most common disease in the world. Typhoid is the fifth most common disease in world. In our country, in India, it causes around 2.5 to 2.7 million people every year. Particularly, the, the age group of that is from around 2 to 15 years of age group. Right? In this age group of the people, of the children, they are the most uh, affected with this disease. Okay? Fifth most common disease. As we discuss different types of diseases, we will discuss which is the first most common, then second most common. But here, typhoid is the fifth most common disease in the world. And in our country, in our country, around, around 1.2 to 1.6 million people are infected every year, every year. Particularly, which is the age? So, this age group people, that is from 2 years to 15 years of age, they are the most uh, infected uh, uh, persons here, infected uh, people. So, in this age group, because they don't maintain much of the hygiene, that's the main reason, rather, how it spreads, uh, how it uh, causes in the in this group of uh, children, rather. So, now, when we discuss about this, we have to, we have to discuss in detail, that is, the first is causal organism, causal organism organism right? or the disease causing agent we can say as disease causing agent also causal organism the organism that causes the disease is what is known as causal organism or we can say that as a causal agent causal agent the agent which causes the disease so here basically basically typhoid the introductory points again that typhoid is a bacterial disease what disease it's a bacterial disease it means it's caused by a bacteria caused by a bacteria the next point about that is again it is the infection of the intestine infection of the intestine these are the general points about typhoid that is that it is the fifth most common disease in the world it it occurs pro most probably in the children between the age group of 12 to 12 to 15 years of age and in our country in our country in a year about 1.2 to 1.6 or 1.5 million or 1.6 million children are getting infected with this disease every year so it's a what disease it's a bacterial disease means, means what it is caused by a bacterium in our previous class previous session we have discussed different types of bacteria what are pathogenic non pathogenic gram positive gram negative we have discussed so all pathogenic bacteria are gram negative bacteria so bacterial disease and what is it it is an infection of infection of what infection of intestine infection of intestine now we'll go to the causal organism the causal organism is Salmonella, Salmonella, Salmonella typhi, Salmonella typhi. This is the bacteria which causes the disease. This is the pathogen bacteria that causes the typhoid disease. Salmonella typhi is a bacteria, gram negative bacteria. Which bacteria? Gram negative bacteria, pathogenic bacteria which causes the typhoid. It can be asked for one more person in your final examination. Name the causative agent of typhoid. So you can say, you can write Salmonella typhi. The other species is Salmonella paratyphi. Right? Well, main organism is Salmonella typhi. So it is a causal organism. Which is a causal organism? Salmonella typhi. What is it? Salmonella typhi is a causal organism bacteria. Typhoid is a fever or an infection caused by Salmonella typhi. Now, the next point to be discussed is mode of infection. Mode of infection. What do you mean by this? What do you mean by mode of infection means? What do you mean by mode of infection means? Clear? What do you mean by mode of infection means? How it spreads from person to person? How it has been transmitted 
from one person to other person what is the mode what is the way what is the what is the media through which it gets transmitted from person to person is what is known as mode of infection right so here the mode of infection is this disease we can say as food borne disease right understand this terminology over here right food borne what do you mean by food borne disease the disease that spreads through food that spreads through food is what is known as food borne disease what type of food contaminated food contaminated contaminated food fine the food which is contaminated by by this bacteria contaminated by salmonella typhi or or contaminated water water contaminated if the water is also contaminated by, by this bacteria or in that water what we are consuming drinking or using for 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 washing purposes utensils and other things in the household household purposes or kitchen works we are using the water which is contaminated by this salmonella typhi bacteria what is contamination the, anything not required is present in that or a pathogen is there a bacteria is there or a parasite is there or any other chemical or any other unwanted poisonous pathogenic thing which is present in the food or water then such a food such a water is what we call as contaminated food or contaminated water and the diseases that spreads through such food contaminated food or contaminated water we call such diseases are food borne diseases or we can say water borne diseases this typhoid comes under the category of both food borne and as well as water borne diseases why because this bacteria is found present in that contaminated food by consuming such a contaminated food or by drinking or by using such a contaminated water this bacteria enters into the person enters into the person so su such a such a method through which this bacteria is spreading transmitting getting transferred or getting transmitted from one person to another person such a thing is what what we call as mode of infection here the mode of infection is through contaminated food and water and such a disease which spreads through contaminated food is what is known as food borne disease b o r n e the spelling is b o r n e food borne disease right or uh, water borne disease water borne disease that disease that spreads through water is what is known as water borne disease i hope it's clear mode of infection is through contaminated food now the question comes which contamination or what contamination for example this bacteria salmonella typhi is found present in the feces of the patient feces stool of the patient defecation when such a water is mixed with the water that is being used for washing purposes or from or for washing the utensils so such water is contaminated or through drainage leakage of the drainage or sewage through improper sewage improper drainage systems if the pit water or toilet water latrine water or the water which contains salmonella typhi is mixed with the food what we are consuming or what we are eating or mixed with the water what we are using such a food contaminated with the salmonella typhi is what is known as contaminated food and contaminated water so this bacteria is found present in the feces in the stool of a patient so when that water is mixed clear so when such a water or food is consumed by any person this bacteria enters into that and then it enters into the liver enters into intestine then causes the disease causes the disease i hope it's clear one is causal organism salmonella typhi the other is known as mode of infection what is that through contaminated food and water now now the third is incubation period incubation period what do you mean by incubation period since this terminology is coming for the first time what is causal organism what is mode of transmission what is incubation period i am explaining you the terminology also so it takes little time from next this is how much we can easily go ahead easily so incubation period what do you mean by incubation period now period you know it's a time time gap right it's a gap of the time or the duration so now incubation means right what do you mean by incubation it, the meaning differs in biotechnology also differs in the in the ornithology study of birds when we discuss in the birds fine incubation period differs but here in epidemiology in the study of diseases incubation refers to the time from which the time from which the pathogen has entered into the person till the appearance of the first symptoms for example today in my body a pathogen has entered 
Today only I don't show any symptoms. Any symptoms are not seen in my body. Now only, immediately, after the entry of pathogen. So today the pathogen has entered into my body. The casual organism has entered into my body. After, for example, for example, after 2-3 days, 4-5 days or 1 week also, fine. after 1 week, certain symptoms are seen. So till that time, when the first symptoms appeared, such a duration, such a gap, from the time of entry of pathogen till the appearance of Till the appearance of first symptoms, such a time period, such a gap, what we refer as incubation period. Incubation period. I hope it's clear the difference of incubation period. Now, when we talk about immunity in the same chapter, when we discuss immunity of a person, so this incubation period vary from pathogen to pathogen, vary from person to person. So always it is referred like this: the incubation period is from one to three weeks. One to three weeks. It's not only confined to one day or one day or one week. So one to three weeks. Why? Because the incubation period vary based, based on the or depending on the immunity of a person. The ability to resist. When we talk about immunity, we we'll talk about that. So here by here, you remember about that point. Incubation period also vary from person to person because of his own personal immunity. So when we talk about immunity, different types of immunity, again we will mention about this, how exactly this period changes. So here the incubation period of typhoid bacteria or salmonella typhoid is what is one to three weeks. For example, this bacteria has entered last week or two weeks before or three weeks before. Then after the infection, after the entry of this bacteria, one week after a person is showing symptoms, some other person after two weeks is showing the first symptoms. So that time period till then this bacteria will be present in the host body host body without causing any harm but after some duration if, if its life cycle goes on after some duration it shows symptoms so the first appearance of that symptom still the entry of the pathogen then the appearance of the first symptom that gap the time period is what is known as incubation period so here the incubation period of salmonella typhi is one to three weeks one to three weeks fine after that now we'll talk about symptoms we'll talk about Symptoms, symptoms. What do you mean by symptoms? Symptoms, symptoms are the signs, signs, the indications, indications which are seen in a person. Abnormal behavior, abnormalities, right? the indications are the signs, signs which says that it's a particular disease. Right? Such signs are known as symptoms. Such signs are known as symptoms. Such indications are known as symptoms. Right? So here. What do you mean by symptoms? Based on the symptoms only, we can decide whether it's an infection or, or I mean to say whether it's a fever or a typhoid fever or malarial fever or a dengue fever. So every disease has its own specific symptoms, specific symptoms. Though there are some common symptoms together, of course, in fact, but yes, yet there are some specific symptoms which defines that this disease is so and so, this disease is, is so and so, if this disease is that, this disease is the other the, the disease. So based on that symptoms, we can decide that this is a typhoid or some malaria. So the symptoms of typhoid is high fever. First, you see, first symptom is high fever. You all very well know body temperature. Fine. More than 2 degree or 2.5 degree higher than the normal body temperature is what is high fever. Fine. Then constipation. Constipation. This we have discussed in the disorders of digestive system in first year. Fine. Constipation, stomach pain, fine, clear where you don't feel comfortable to pass the feces. So constipation, high fever, fine, stomach pain, stomach pain, one symptom, constipation, another symptom, high fever is another symptom, vomiting, fine. vomiting, nausea, you all very well know, I hope, what do you mean by nausea? Nausea is the feeling of, feeling of, Vomiting. Vomiting sensation is what we call as nausea, vomiting, high fever, constipation, stomach pain, uncomfortableness, fine? irritation of the body, fine? indigestion, that all leads to indigestion, fine? clear. In, in severe infections, in severe infection, there will, be, there will be swelling of the spleen also. Spleen will also swell up, fine? liver also, inflammation of the liver takes place. Inflammation of the spleen takes place, spleen and liver swelling takes place in severe conditions and also in serious infection, severe infection. What do you mean by that? High rate of infection, high rate of value. When you go for the test, we'll talk about that later. Fine. So, 
finally finally it leads to bloody stool right don't get confused bloody stool what do you mean by that blood in the stool is what is known as bloody stool right stool having blood right blood stains or blood is coming along with the stool along with the feces so such a stool we can call as bloody stool right so blood with the stool is what is known as bloody stool this is the last symptom if it is not treated in time this disease if it is not treated in time it is lethal it kills the patient so this is the last symptom bloody stool or blood in the stool is a final symptom right and from intestine it also spreads to other parts of the body liver spleen right right other parts of the body then it leads to death if it is not treated if it is not treated clear next this we will discuss later fine right? after symptoms i repeat now symptoms high fever constipation indigestion stomach pain vomiting nausea and also finally inflammation of the spleen inflammation of the liver and then blood in the stool yeah. then prevention prevention you all very well know the very common phrase no right prevention is better than cure everybody knows this precautions are better than cure prevention is better than cure it's a old uh, phrase you all everybody know right nowadays if cure is not the option care is the option care is that this is the new phrase of diseases right so prevention how to prevent this disease how to prevent this disease now as you can see here right clear how it has mode of transmission we have seen based on that what is the mode of transmission we have to prevent that what is the mode of transmission contaminated food contaminated water so here avoid avoid contamination of contamination of food and water food and water avoid contamination of what food and water why because through this only it is getting transmitted so what is the preventive measure in medical terminology you call as prophylaxis prophylaxis or you call as prophylactic measures but in common terminology we can call them as preventions preventions or preventive prevention measures or just preventions or you can call them as prophylactic measures or prophylaxis so avoid contamination of food and water then maintain personal hygiene this is very important for most of the diseases the diseases that spreads through physically or through food water or physical or sexual contact so here personal hygiene personal hygiene is very important right this is very very important uh, preventive measure maintaining of washing of hands before and after meals proper washing of hands after after attending the nature call nature call right you have to use sanitizers right or soaps right or disinfectants right to wash your hands and also wash properly thoroughly hands before and after eating food so that's what is that is included as far as the part of personal hygiene right then always cover the food cover the food cover the food okay cover the food always the food particles food items should be always covered right and personal hygiene proper sanitation right proper proper or uh, complete complete sanitation that is me that it there includes proper drainage proper drainage and sewage proper drainage and sewage the sewage water the drainage water the toilet water pit water should not get contaminated with should not mixed up with drinking water or the water which is used for other purposes so proper drainage system proper sewage system prevents this disease prevents this this is i hope it's clear what are the preventive measures prophylactic measures fine what is avoid contamination of food and water personal hygiene keep yourself always clean tidy neat fine wash your hands fine properly thoroughly with the soap with the detergents with sanitizers after visiting the washroom fine or attending nature call then cover the food particles always fine then proper complete sanitation drainage or sewage such a these are the measures which avoid this disease which avoid this disease now in this disease we have to include one more point one more point that is diagnosis diagnosis you all very well know i have told this refers to process what is diagnosis means is the process wherein the disease is detected the technique or the method of detection of the disease is what we call as 
diagnosis right the method or the procedure the technique through which disease is detected such a such a procedure is what is known as diagnosis <coughs> so here it can be asked for one mark also in your final examination right we use a test the name of the test is known as Weidel test what test it is Weidel test Weidel test this test is referred as named as Weidel test Weidel test is conducted to detect the detect the presence of typhoid antibodies in the blood in the blood of the person fine by using some typhoid antigens fine so diagnosis means the technique or the procedure the method to detect the disease now how this typhoid is being detected how it is being how it is being detected by using a technique or a test known as Weidel test what test Weidel test now what is Weidel test for example for extra information it's a serological test what test it's a serological serological test now what do you mean by serological test serological serological refers to serum serological refers to serum anything concerned with the serum is what is known as serological so here you might be knowing those who have suffered from fever or typhoid fever i mean to say they have they used to collect the blood for test so in that blood by using a centrifuge fine they collect the serum they test the presence of salmonella anti antibodies in that in that serum based on that they confirm that this disease is typhoid disease so such a test which detects the presence of salmonella typhoid in the human blood or in the serum is what we call as diagnosis and this diagnosis is done by Weidel test that test that is used to detect the typhoid right is known as Weidel test what is a Weidel test it is a serological test what do you mean by that serological method means serum is used what is your serum where do you obtain serum from the blood from the patient's blood i hope it's clear right you have to remember that that typhoid is detected by Weidel test what is last year for one mark also again what is the casual organism of typhoid salmonella typhoid or they can say mention the any four symptoms of incubation mention any four symptoms of typhoid for two marks okay so after this we'll go for treatment treatment casual organism mode of transmission incubation period symptoms preventions after that diagnosis fine right? even after preventions also fine right? the disease is not prevented if a person is suffering from this disease what has to be done treatment fine right? treatment this is a, you all know that it's a bacterial disease i told you the very beginning it's a, that it is a bacterial disease so it has it is it has to be treated with antibiotics antibiotics here there are two terms to be to be referred to be referred one is antibiotics other is vaccine these two two topics are there in our chapter separately we will discuss what is antibiotic who has found out all those things vaccine who has found out when it has found out fine all will talk about that alexander fleming edward jenner fine 1917 about vaccines separate topic is there we will talk, we'll talk now just for here to remove your confusion what is antibiotics antibiotics are the chemicals which are given to kill the pathogen to kill the pathogen as the name says anti against biotic bio life are living against living so what do you mean by antibiotics the strong chemicals that kills the pathogen that kills the bacteria that kills a parasite or a pathogen or a bacteria such chemicals are referred as antibiotics antibiotics remember that antibiotics are given after the diagnosis of the disease to cure the disease what for to cure the disease antibiotics are given to cure the disease whereas vaccines are given to prevent the disease to prevent the disease what is vaccine same casual organism when we talk about vaccine different types of vaccination all those things will back same organism is given in low dose or heat kill dose so such a such a method fine where we where we use the same pathogen fine it is given a smaller dose before the occurrence of the disease it is given as a preventive measure as what measure preventive measure we can include this as vaccination here the process of prevention is vaccination what vaccination oral oral vaccination what do you mean by oral vaccination through mouth through mouth not through by syringes through mouth oral vaccination so vaccination vaccines and antibiotics i hope it's these two terms are clear to you antibiotics are given after the occurrence of the disease as a part of treatment vaccines are given 
as a preventive measure to prevent the disease to protect the to protect the person from that disease so here treatment is done by treatment is done by antibiotics treatment is done by anti antibiotics clear salmonella typhi is a very strong bacteria gram negative bacteria so the first very first antibiotic you all very well know it is nothing but penicillin fine penicillin penicillin is given tetracycline is given tetracycline is given chloramphenicol chloramphenicol is given tetracycline is given penicillin is given so such a such a strong antibody is given you might have taken monosef every day or not morning one evening one fine about 5 days or 6 days strong antibodies are given to kill this bacteria fine so antibiotics we talk about that penicillin you all very well know first anti first antibody discovered by alexander fleming from the fungi penicillium notatum so penicillin there are two types of penicillin one is penicillin and is penicillin g we we'll talk about that later when we talk antibiotics tetracycline chloramphenicol these are the strong antibodies that is used to treat typhoid used to treat typhoid i hope it's clear about typhoid now next we move on to the next next we move on to the second disease second disease that is what is known as pneumonia pneumonia the name 26 26 so i don't think we can complete one more we can take up one more class because the time almost time is up so i repeat now fine typhoid typhoid is a bacterial disease since we have taken for the first time I have discussed the terminology also, so it has taken more time. From the next class, we will discuss the two-two diseases in a in a session. So typhoid is a bacterial disease. It is caused by Salmonella typhi. It is the infection of the intestine. Clear yeah, infection of the intestine. The causal organism is Salmonella typhi. Incubation period is around one to three weeks. Right? One to three weeks. Then symptoms are high fever, constipation, constipation, indigestion, indigestion. stomach pain inflammation of the spleen inflammation of the liver then finally blood in stool these are all the symptoms prevention avoid contamination of food and water maintain personal hygiene cover up all the food items edible items oral vaccination is used proper complete thorough sanitation drainage system sewage system so that the drinking water should not mix up with the drainage water or sanitation water or pit water next diagnosis how to detect the disease by collecting the blood of the patient from that blood by centrifugation method serum is obtained in that serum they check for the presence of salmonella typhi antibodies by using salmonella typhi antigens so when it is there it is diagnosed as typhoid as typhoid then what is the vital test is a serological test by using serum then in the treatment we have discussed three and strong antibodies penicillin tetracycline and chloramphenicol i hope it's clear do watch subscribe the channel make your theory notes fine right? watch this class repeatedly use your headphones for more clarity make theory notes in the next session we'll talk about pneumonia and common cold